you may have noticed on the thumbnail today that our Genki 1 Lesson 12 is actually a part 1. So it's part 1 of 2, and the reason I did that is, well, there's one big reason, and that's that they packed way too much into Lesson 12 itself. Um, lesson 11, which we covered last week, it was an hour and 20 minute stream, and it only had four parts and only one really major thing to cover. But Lesson 12 has six parts and at least two of them I'd say maybe three are actually pretty pretty major grammar points that I'd like to spend a little bit of time on so <clears throat> instead of doing a three-hour marathon stream which you know nobody re really wants to sit and listen to a three-hour lecture um, I cut it into two so we're only gonna be covering three things today and those are as you can see right here explaining yourself saying too much and also saying had better or really should so let's jump right into explaining yourself so sorry that was totally my fault i had you open in two and <laughs> no worries man it happens to the best of us so the first thing we're going to be covering is explaining ourselves now a normal sentence in japanese sounds like this takakatta expensive or it was expensive an explanation sentence might sound something like this takakattanda nda right so genki lesson 12 presents this idea as n this <clears throat> but i counter that that is incorrect thinking about it as n this is going to cause you troubles in the future the truth is, and the funny thing to me is, I can't reach it back there. You might be able to see a little yellow book. Probably not. But it's called a, a Dictionary of Basic Japanese Grammar. And <clears throat> it's made by the same publishers as Genki, which is the Japan Times. But it's way better at explaining grammar than the actual textbook. Where's Ando-san, says Kyushu Trail. Unfortunately, Ando-san is on TikTok tonight. Or later tonight. I don't know. He's busy. Sorry, man. Couldn't make it. But yeah, so the grammar book is way better at explaining these grammar points. So a lot of times when I have to look for more information to share with you guys on the grammar points shared in Genki, I jump into that book. And that book presents this one as not n des, but as no da. No da. So you may know that da, or rather des, is the more polite form of da. And n is a spoken like a um, sort of a shortcut for saying no. So n this is really a conversationally polite no da. So just keep that in mind. TikTok for the wins is Dean Cook. Reason I'll probably end up downloading it. Yeah, I'm not sure how I feel about it yet, but I could see it being fun and a great way to practice and play around with Ando san. Um, I've already got a few recorded. They should be going up probably tomorrow. Um, it's kind of fun to just play around with like 15 seconds tidbits of, uh, of, of content. It's going to be, it's going to be a little bit of an adventure. I think of this construction as it's that, yeah, yeah, that's a good way to think of it actually as it's that something, something, something. So let's go over the way you make this form. And that is the short form of a verb. So for example, taberu, and you just add no da to the end of it. And that makes it an explanation. We'll go over some examples. Just looking at it like this isn't really going to give you an idea of how it's used. So stick around. We'll be going over examples in just a minute. Lots of examples so that you can get an idea of what's going on. You can also add no da to the end of adjectives and nouns. So an e adjective, you would just add no da to the end of the e adjective. <clears throat> For a na adjective and nouns, you treat them exactly the same way. You add na or da. And then you add no da. So let's jump into some examples because I know these mathematical equations can be a little bit confusing. Um, some really simple examples. And I'm going to play around with them to make you see, to show you like how you might use them in writing or in conversation. And the first one is hanashita no da. Hanashita da. Right? So hanashita is the past tense of hanasu, which is to speak or to talk. And then we add no da, and that becomes an explanation. So I'm explaining to someone why maybe I did something or the fact that I did do something 
probably in relation to a question. So we'll get to the questions in a minute because just saying it on, on its own sort of gives it a bit of a, I guess, an emotive feeling. It makes it feel like a little bit emotional, maybe not so much of an explanation if you're just saying it on its own. But like if someone was getting angry at me because they thought I didn't talk to someone, I might be like, Hanastanda, mo. I already spoke to them. So yeah, that's I talk. Now, this could be shortened to hanashtanda, or it can be made more polite by saying hanashita no desu. All right, so with an E adjective, we get takakatanda. Right, we got the shortened conversational version right here. Takakatanda. It could also be takakatta no desu, takakatta no da. Right? It was expensive. So maybe someone asked me why I didn't buy something. It was expensive. Uh, or maybe they asked me how it was, and I said it was expensive, a movie or something, right? The next sentence is with a, a noun. This could also be a na adjective. It would be treated the same way. For this one, we would say, kodomo nan desu. Kodomo na no desu. Kodomo na no da. Either way is fine. The n desu and n da are just conversational variants. It's much easier to say n in conversation than it is to say no. So in this case, it would be like, they're a child, or the the sort of nuance this in this that you might say if you were saying it in English would be, they're just a child. Dad's getting angry at the kids, and mom's like, they're just a kid. Kodomo nanda. Kodomo nanda. Or maybe they're just, it could be many different situations, but we're going to jump into some conversational examples so you can get a feel for those as well. Sorry, I forgot to throw the hiragana on top of those right now. So, moving on, we've got a couple question and answers because that's where you're really going to see this popping up is in in sort of com in conversation. It's not just going to be on its own usually. So we've got Mr. A and Mr. B, or maybe Mrs. B and A. It doesn't matter. So A says, "Nande kawanakatta? Why didn't you buy it?" B says. Takakatanda, it was expensive. Takakatanda, that's why I didn't buy it. Pretty simple, right? I'm explaining why I didn't do the thing they're asking for. Now, the person could also ask in their question if they wanted to, like down here. Are wa dare nan desu ka? You can use this construction at the end of questions as well to... um to make it obvious that you want an explanation. So, are wa dare nan desu ka? So, dare is like a, um, I guess it's a, well, it's like a who question, right? Um, who is that? And I want them to answer, so I'm saying n desu. I don't have to. I mean, it's obvious I want them to answer, even if I say, are wa dare desu ka? But I think it's actually much more natural to say, are wa dare nan da? Or, are wa dare nan desu ka? Or, mm, yeah, that, basically. Um, you can also just cut the whole thing and say, dare na no? Dare na no? And that's often, m many women actually say, they replace the whole thing in questions with no. And men can also do it too, but even in the Genki book, it mentions that it's more of a, a feminine way of asking a question. Let me just catch up on chat really quick. Come to Japan says, jumping in a bit head feels a bit better. I hope you feel better, man. Sounds like you have a pretty bad headache over there. Hope it's not too bad. I had a really bad headache this week, too. I wonder if something's going around. Robert Helverson says, I've never heard the no this contracted, non-contracted version. Ask the wife, and she wound up rephrasing it a little bit. Yeah, so no this, right? Y you... You probably would never say it in conversation. Um, in written language, I think it might appear a little more. Um, but yeah, in conversation, even polite conversation, it's going to probably come out as this. Sounds a little rude. Really? No this. Or the this. Does that sound a little bit rude? Mm, not really rude, just less. She's nodding now. <laughs> All right. Sweet. Yeah. So, right. So my question was, let's jumping back into this, are wa dare nan desu ka? And the answer is, sensei nan desu, sensei nan desu. No, the whole construction. Ah, yeah. I guess. I don't know. It doesn't sound, it depends on, uh, very much so on the, um, 
on the situation, whether or not it's going to come off as rude or, you know, just a straight explanation. Um, it can also, I think, very much depend on your intonation. Um, if you're going up at the end, sensei nan this, well, no, that's a terrible ex explanation. I can't really do it right now without some kind of context. But if you sound angry when you're saying it, you might be expressing that you're annoyed that you have to explain the situation. But in general, I don't think it's necessarily rude. So jumping into our conversational example, um, we have, again, A and B. And I just want to cover for those of you who weren't here last week that with the conversational examples, I go through the whole conversation first, and then we go through line by line uh, covering the meaning of each conversation. So I'm going to jump into this conversation right here, and that is A-san says, Ika nai n desu ka? Mm, uh, wow, sorry about that. Mm, sono hi isogashi n da. A-san. Uh, are? Are? Alright, so let's go through that line by line. That was a very messy conversation. But anyway, <clears throat> the first line was You're not going? And obviously, you're not just asking whether or not they're going. You kind of want an explanation as to why they're not going. When you add this, mm, this, <clears throat> sorry, it's way too dry in this room. So B says, mm, yeah, sono hi isogashi in da. So keep in mind, when I go through these conversations, another thing I want to mention about the conversational examples is that I often drop particles because I'm making the conversational examples, well, conversational. And in conversation, especially if it's between friends, a lot of times you're going to drop particles, and that's completely fine. So, B is being pretty mm, informal, so we can probably assume that B is a senpai or older than or more, uh, you know, high in rank than A, because A is being more polite. Ika nai desu ka? Mm, sono hi isogashi in da. All right. Our next part of the conversation was, Itta ga in desu yo. You really should go, you know. This is this could also be translated as, you had really, you had better go, you know. Um, I kind of think of ho ga yi as really should or had better. Either way. So, itta ho ga in desu yo. You really should go, you know. Demo, ikitaku nai in da, but... I don't want to go. Ikitakunai. We covered ikitakunai uh, last week's lesson. So if you are watching this on the replay and you want to learn how to make the I want to construction, you can go back to lesson 11 and we covered that there. So he's explaining or she is explaining that the reason that they don't want to go, the real reason is that they just don't want to go. Or the reason that they're not going is that they don't want to go. Is it that you're not going? Is what that I'm not going. Sorry, I missed that. I, that might have come up a few minutes ago, and I missed the whole thing. So yeah, let's just go through that whole conversation one more time. Ika nai n desu ka? Hmm. Sono hi isogashi in da. Itta hou ga ii n desu yo. Demo, ikitaku nai n da. I don't want to go. All right. So. That is the end of no this. So if anyone has any questions, that would be this would be a good time to do it. You can save them till the end if you want to. Either way is completely fine with me. But yeah, in this um, I use it a lot. Whenever I, f it just comes out naturally now. But I guess whenever I'm sort of explaining myself, not necessarily as an excuse, just like explaining something that happened or answering a question. It's, I often use it, very, very often. So it's definitely, it sounds more natural when you're explaining yourself to use that. So it's definitely something that you want to get used to. All right. So since it doesn't look like there's any questions yet, I'm happy to stop at any time. So just let me know, guys. Any time is fine. Uh, I'm going to move on to sugiru, which is too or with two O's or too much. So we use the auxiliary verb 
sugiru to express that. We put that at the end of verbs. I'm going to show you how to make that right now with another mathematical equation. So, to use sugiru with a verb, we just take the vima stem, which we covered back in Genki Lesson 3. Uh, I'll drop a link up here for anyone watching on the replay. So you can go check that out if you don't know how to make the VMAS stem yet. You should probably just stop here if you don't know how to make that because it's going to get really confusing from here on out. So anyway, we take the VMAS stem and just add SUGIRU. And by the way, SUGIRU can be conjugated just like the regular verb SUGIRU. We'll cover that in a few minutes. So anyway, to use it with a negative, we would cut the E in a negative. And once again, we'll, I'll show you that in an example in a minute. We add SA and then sugiru. For E adjectives, we once again cut the E, and that's why we do it with a negative. Negatives are generally, like the, the, the short form negative is, it ends in E, right? Nai. So it's generally treated the same way when we're conjugating it as an E adjective. So for the E adjective, we also cut the E and add sugiru. No sa though, ne? No sa. For na adjectives, we just add sugiru. That's all you need to do. So let's look at some examples to make that clearer. All right, so the vima stem for the verb taberu, which is to eat, is tabe. We just had sugiru, and that means eat too much. So we could also conjugate this, this sugiru to say we ate too much, and that would be tabe sugita in the short form past tense. Or tabe sugi nakatta would be I didn't eat too much, and stuff like that. So it's just conjugated as a normal the normal verb sugiru. All right, moving on to negatives. Same verb, tabe nasa sugiru. So we cut the um, the e in tabe nai. Tabe nai is to not eat. We cut the e in arasa. Tabe nasa sugiru. Eat too little. The the literal translation for this would be something more along the lines of not eat too much. But we would never actually say that in English. The, the better translation for this would obviously be eat too little. For an E adjective, we'll use takai. And that would be taka sugiru. Sorry, I didn't drop up the, uh, the hiragana in here. But anyway, taka sugiru. Too expensive. We cut the E, add sugiru. For the na adjective, shizuka, we just add sugiru. That's it. Shizuka sugiru. Too quiet. And that's it. So, any questions so far? I'm going to jump into some full-length full sentences right now just to help us practice that. All right, so our first sentence is Niku wo tabesugimashita. So as you can see here, I conjugated it into the polite past tense, sugimashita. Niku wo tabesugimashita. I ate too much meat. I don't think that's possible. But apparently I did eat too much meat. Definitely not possible though. All right. Niku wo tabesugimashita. Our next sentence is Mizu wo nomanasa sugiru. You drink too little water. That happens with my kids in kindergarten a lot. They're not drinking enough. Well, they don't bring water. They bring tea. Most people in Japan, I don't know if you guys know this, especially kids in school, they don't really drink water. They drink... um. They drink, what is it, mugi tea, basically mugi cha, which is barley tea or wheat tea instead of water. Roasted wheat, yeah, roasted barley tea instead of water. So you probably wouldn't be saying this sentence too much, but yeah, I can't get used to that. I don't know. I've tried to drink just tea, but I definitely, I never feel like I'm actually, my thirst is quenched when I'm just drinking tea. So anyway, mizu wo nomanasa sugiru. You drink too little water. Kyushu Trail says, otona no cream pie wo tabesugimashita. I'm glad to hear that. It's the McDonald's. Otona no cream pie. Uasa no. Anyway, <laughs> moving on to e adjective sentence, we've got takasugitanda. It was too expensive. So here we're using our last construction, nda or no da, and adding it to our new construction, takasugitanda. It was too expensive. Not just it was expensive, in this case it was too expensive. Takasugitanda. 
In this case, we have it in the short form past tense. Oh my goodness, I'm losing my voice again. I always lose my voice in this lesson for some reason. All right. So we're going to jump into the conversation right now. And just to remind you, I'm going to go through the whole entire thing, despite it being six lines, before I go over each line by line. So listen, see if you can pick up what we're talking about, and then we'll go over it line by line. All right, so we've got Mr. A and Mrs. B, I guess, again. And they both seem to be speaking in a very informal manner, so I'd assume they're just friends. All right, so A. Nomi kai wa dou datta? B. Osake nomi A. Sasuga B kun. B. Mo isho nomanai. That's A. B. Alright. So let's go over those one by one. Nomi kai wa dou datta? How was the drinking party? So nomi kai is a it's a Japanese word and it just means it's a drinking party. Now I don't know about any of you guys from well Austra I know we've got people from Australia, from America, from quite a few different places, but do we do things called drinking parties? I know we do parties, right? And sometimes there's alcohol at them. But I don't feel like we have anything that we call a drinking party. Unless, well, maybe in college. But anyway, nomikai is a big thing here. Um, if you go out drinking after work or a couple times a year with your school. Yeah, we go out for drinks. Yeah, that's what we'd say. We go out for drinks. We don't have a nomikai or a drinking party. It's almost like you're required to drink alcohol, basically. It's in the name. So, nomikai wa dou datta? How was the drinking party? Do is how, and datta is, of course, the past tense, in, uh, the informal past tense of da or des. B says, Osake nomi sugitanda. Osake nomi sugitanda. So, here we have our construction sugiru, sugiru uh, in the past tense. Osake is alcohol. Um, a lot of people make the mistake of calling sake. Uh, nihon shu sake. It's not really a mistake. I mean, we do call in America nihon shu sake. But in Japan, when you say osake, it can mean nihon shu, but generally it's a, it's a more general term that just means alcoholic drinks. If, if I say sake no mitai na, I want to drink sake, what I mean might be beer or vodka or shochu or sake nihon shu so it's it's more general so in this case i say osake no mi sugitanda i drank too much alcohol all right let's see get togethers at the pub yeah we have drinking parties us we go to someone's house and we bring drinks with us and share them seems to be an emphatic construction yeah this one is yeah i was going to mention that so this one is the is not just uh, an explanation it's it's really sort of Adding that n does, adding that emotive, that sort of, mm, I did too much, right? It adds that nuance of, I'm upset about it, almost. Not, it's an explanation, and it's more emotional. Yeah, it's not necessarily explanatory here. Agreed, Robert. Thank you for catching that. All right, our next sentences are pretty straightforward. We've got, Sasuga Bikun. And I translated this without the name in it. It's, as you do. Um, I couldn't. Sasuga is sort of a hard one to translate perfectly because it's something you say when someone does something and it's exactly what you would expect of them. And it can be good. It can be bad. It depends on the thing they're doing, obviously. If someone does something, they get first place in a piano recital and they always get first place in the pi piano recitals or they're just really good at piano and you know that, you could say Sasuga, Sasuga when you find out, right? It's, of course you did. That's another way you could say it. Of course you did. Uh, in this case, it could also be, of course you did, because apparently B tends to drink way too much. Our next sentence is, Mo isho nomanai. Isho nomanai. Isho. I have uh, isho and nai, both pink, because the meaning of isho will change depending on the conjugation of whatever comes after it. So in this case, it's the negative. So isho will mean never. And if it were positive, uh, it would just mean always or forever. Now, mo, as you can see, I've got pink and red here. Mo can sort of have a double meaning in this sense because 
more if you just say it like that it's sort of an ex not an expletive as in like a curse word in english but it's like um it's like i'm exasperated it's like oh i can't do it anymore or something like that right it's like the oh in that sentence or just i think i looked it up in my my phone the other day and it there was a couple good exp um what what would you say translations in there that i i never really thought about but ah damn it or geez or come on but it also means again so in this case it's yeah an exclamation and it means again um but even if i didn't have the mo if i just said uh it would be implied that i meant again so it sort of means again and it's also kind of that exclamation at the beginning of a sentence just just in this case right it's a double meaning if i were to say without that emotion mo isho no manai right just straight textbook mo isho no manai then i would say that in this case it just did the role of the word again i'll never drink again but in this case i'm upset about it so i say mo isho no manai so it's the emotive and the word again. So sorry if that exp explanation was unnecessarily long, but I felt like that was important to cover really quick. Next one is just a very, this person finds it funny. It's just a laugh. Ha 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 ha. LMAO. Nobody would ever write this when they were saying LMAO. They'd probably write WWWW in a text message or something. Because warao, which we're going to cover right here, starts with a W if you write it in domaji. So to write I mean, you can just write the kanji warao, like in a text message, to mean LOL, basically. Or you could write WW, as many as you want, to mean warao or LOL, laugh out loud, right? Little fun tidbit for you. So anyway, our next sentence is, yeah, like Kyushu Trails just said right there, putting the kanji for warao can mean basically LOL. You use it the same way as you would use LOL in English. A uh, more modern way of doing it is just the, the letter W a couple times. All right, next sentence was... Now, the reason I put this one here is you can see that we've only got the first part of the word sugidu. We've got sugi, and then we've got dayo. Now, obviously, this isn't really grammatically correct. Um, it's not conjugated. We literally cut the ru and added dayo. Um, there probably is a term for this, but in my experience, it's just sort of a conversational way of using the construction sugidu. So we've got the mas form of warao, which is to smile or to laugh. We cut uh, and then we add sugidu. So a proper form of the sentence would be warai sugidu or warai sugi, mm, warai sugidu. But to be really sort of emphatic about it, and I'm a little bit upset about it, we cut the ru and add dayo, right? It's, it's mask. This guy's probably a dude, um, a guy, and he's being very forceful with this sense. What I see there, something like that, right? You're laughing too much. All right. So that is the end of Sugiru. We are just blowing through it tonight. We're, well, I guess we're 30 minutes in. It's not, it's not that slow. So we're down to the last section of part one of lesson 12, and that is really should or had better do something and that construction is hoga i now my video that i just did um yesterday i guess with ando san about making a tiktok um let me just cover this really quick usually i do lessons where there's some there's some skits in it usually i say recently a skit and then a lesson within it and i'm still going to continue doing that but i found that a lot of people just want to watch the skit. So I decided to start releasing the skits first and then the lesson along with the skits afterwards. So tomorrow morning, the lesson version of yesterday's video with ando -san is coming out tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. Japan time. So in, I don't know, 10 hours. So anyway, the reason I'm saying that is because that lesson is all about this construction. It just so happened that I made the decision to cover Hogai this week. Over a week ago, I made the decision. And this lesson in Genki just so happens to also cover Hogai. So, if you're finished with this, you should be able to understand a lot of what Ando-san is saying in yesterday's skits. Yahoo, says Taylor Drew. Good evening, Taylor. Thanks for joining. 
Robert Helverson says, Ando to wa? Yeah, Ando is my uh, my new character who's been joining me in many of my, my video on demand lessons, non streamed lessons. So, yeah, he um, he's a character. So, anyway, the lesson on Hogai, the full lesson with Ando san, is out tomorrow at 7 a.m. Got that covered? All right, so really should or had better in Japanese is hoga i attached to the end of a sentence. Generally, not generally, in this way. So first, you either have the short past tense plus hoga i. Now I have des in parentheses. Um, Genki provide or teaches this with the des. I think that it's very, very optional. Um, I rarely use it, but it's perfectly. It's grammatically correct. Um, just you generally don't need the des when you're using this construction. So I put it in parentheses. I don't even know if it shows up in any of my example sentences. But know that you can put it there to be a little bit more polite with this. So to use it with a negative sentence to say you had better not do something or you really shouldn't do something, you take the short negative form and add hogai and maybe des if you want it. All right, so let's go into some examples. So our first example is with the past tense. We've got tabeta hoga i. Had better or really should eat. Now from this point on in the lesson, I'm going to use had better and really should interchangeably, uh, just based on how I felt at the time when I wrote the sentence. Know that if you're translating these or if that's what you want to do, either one is going to really be fine in this situation. Um, Something I did not cover in this Genki lesson, but I do cover in tomorrow's, is that the actual construction itself is ho, and you can use the kanji for direction here. Direction, ga is a particle, obviously, and e is good. It's the word good. So it really means that direction is good. But in reality, translating it literally, or the usage of it, is had better. Just because that's the best way to express it in English. But anyway... The thing eating that direction is a good would be like a literal translation, but obviously it sounds better to say really should eat. <laughs> All right. So in negative sentence, we have nomanai hoga i. Really should not drink that or something, right? We could be talking about sake. Nomanai hoga i yo. You shouldn't drink. Or we might be talking about some beverage that's poison, right? Nomanai hoga i are. Yaho Tera says Kyushu Trail. All right. So our last sentence here is it's got a star by it because you can use hogai with non past tense sentences in the positive, in, with just the dictionary form, as in yomu hogai. Now I translated this as just should read without the really because yomu hogai is less. It sort of has a sense of being less forceful. Um, you can say it, but maybe it's just a polite suggestion, not uh, you really need to do this type of thing. I've personally never used this. I've never used yomu hogai. I would always say yonda hogai yo or yonda hogai. Um, but I have heard it used, and I guess I didn't know this until recently actually, that it's just, it's slightly less forceful. But I think in general, most people will use the past tense, hogai, or just negative, obviously, if it's a negative. But just know that it is not incorrect if you just use the dictionary form as in here with yomu hogai. Okay, now that we got that covered, on to the next one. And I forgot to throw out the hiragana again. Sorry about that. There they are. All right, moving on. So here are some much longer sentences we're going to use with this. We, um, you'll notice, you may notice that in pink, we've got ndes, and in the second, second sense, in the second sentence, we have suginai. So we use both of the constructions from earlier in these sentences. So let's take a look at them. The first one is motto tanpaku shitsu wo tabeta hoga in desu yo. You had better eat more protein. So, motto is more. Tanpaku shitsu is protein. And, of course, tabeta is the past tense of to eat. Hogain desu yo. 
So this is maybe not just an explanation. It's as uh, Robert pointed out earlier, an emphatic construction. So it's being like, you really need to do this. So that's another way you can use n des or no da, which we covered earlier. Um, Taylor Drew says, I actually didn't know that. I'm assuming she means the yomu hogai thing. Yeah, I didn't know that actually either until I was in the dictionary just checking my facts on this lesson and I found that out. I've never used it. I do think I've heard people use it that way, but I never have. So yeah, um, this n des in this case is just adding more emphasis. Um, Genki does not cover this usage of no da, which is why I didn't actually put it in the lesson, but it is, I've talked about it throughout the lesson. And here, it, it is a way you can use it. So you had better eat more protein. Motto tanpakushitsu wo tabeta ho ga in desu yo. Our next sentence is Osake wo nomisugi nai ho ga i yo. You really shouldn't drink too much alcohol. Now I, I split up the words. You really should not drink too much alcohol to make it a little bit easier to read. We've got osake, which I explained earlier is alcohol, not necessarily nihonshu. Sugi nai, we've got too much with sugi ru, right? But the negative is the not here. No mi sugi nai hogai. You really should not drink too much alcohol, or you had better not drink too much alcohol. All right. What's this? All right. Okay. So going back to our earlier sentences, which was uh, the conversation about not wanting to go when we were using this. That was one of our first conversational examples. So we can go back to that to, because I actually used hogai in there. Um, and take a look at that really quick. We've got itta hogai in desu yo. Oh, I forgot to color code this. Sorry. You really should go, you know. Itta hogai in desu yo. Once again, this is more of uh, emphatic construction. Demo ikitaku nai in da. So this person is saying, you'd better go to that party or whatever. You really should go. And this other person, B to be exact, doesn't want to. But don't worry, I did make a conversation for this one as well. Let's take a look what happened over here. Actually, didn't know that. Right. Yaho Taylor says Final Boss Studios. Thank you guys again for, for all being here. It's, it's always nice to have some people here to, uh, to watch the lessons. And I hope it helps some of you. And I hope everyone can learn a little something new. I know I've been learning little tidbits of new stuff as I go along teaching these, which is so what's so great about teaching is you can, you can learn more along the way as well. All right. So, our conversation is again, as always, between Mr. or Mrs. A and Mr. or Mrs. B. In this case, they both appear to be speaking in a very informal form, so we will assume they're either friends or family. So, A first, once again, I'm going to read the whole thing and we'll go over it line by line afterwards. See if you can pick up what I'm talking about using what we've learned throughout the lesson. All right, so here we go. A is on the phone, so denwa. じゃあ、またね。B。誰だったええ。お母さんだった。B。俺もお母さんに電話しなきゃ。A。あ、そう。うん、もう10ヶ月ぐらい話してない。A。え、マジ電話した方がいいよ。There's our construction right there. All right. Let's go over this conversation line by line. All right, our first one is A, Denwa. Ja, mata ne. Denwa is, of course, phone, like they're on the phone. So they just hung up. Ja, mata ne. Ja is just like, K, talk to you later, is like, mata ne. Mata ne, talk to you later. All right, B says, dare datta. We covered this a little bit earlier. Dare is who. Datta is just the past tense of da, which is. Well, it's like is. So who was that? Dare datta? Okaasan datta. Uh, we could have used unda here. Okaasan datta nda. We could have used unda. We don't have to, but we could have. All right, it was my mother. Super easy. Moving on to the next part. We're still not to our hoga yet. Our next sentence was, Ore mo kaasan ni denwa shinakya. I also have to call my mom now this is something we've never covered in any of the genki lessons so far and that is shinakya 
Now, the reason I actually included it here is because it's going to be on part two of our Lesson 12 stream, which will be next week. So it basically is a very short, uh, informal version of must or have to. And we'll cover that next week. And this is one of the big ones. It's 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 not extremely complicated, but it's an extremely long construction that's really hard to memorize and get out when you're practicing. So I feel like it's worth spending some extra time on. So that's why I didn't add it to today's lesson, because I feel like we would have gone on all night if we had used that. So anyway, just giving you a little taste here. Ore mo kasa ni denwa shinakya. I also have to call my mom. You'll notice I did not put o in front of okasan. Um, if you're talking about your own mother, it's you can just say kasan if you want to. Some people will. It's it's maybe kind of masculine. I'm not really sure about that. Yuki, is it more masculine to cut the o in kasan? Mm, boys will cut the o. So yeah, it's it's more of a masculine way to say okasan. So we can probably assume that a is a girl here and b is a boy. Well, he's also using ore, so it's a guy. Uh, ah, so, ah is just an exclamation. Oh, really? So, this is where we finally get to our construction in the se second sentence here. B says, mm, mo Yeah, mm. We already, so mo can also mean already, have not spoken in about... 10 months. So, jukagetsu. Uh, good eye is about. So, we have we have not spoken on the phone in about 10 months. Yabayetsu jan. What out? <laughs> Says Taylor Drew. That yabayetsu might be me. Now, I talked to my mom on social media, but I haven't actually called home in a long time. I'm a terrible son. Sorry, mom, if you're watching this. Yuki's nodding. Yeah, I'm bad at that. I'm really bad at calling calling home anyway moving on to a a says eh? what maji demashita hou ga ii yo you had really better call her so i used had better here uh, in my translation because i wanted to emphasize the maji right here which is really it's like a very informal really 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 so we can really quickly cover here that by adding other adjectives to the hogai formula, we can make it even more emphatic, right? If I had said, eh, demashita hogai yo, I mean, obviously I'm saying you'd better call her. But if I say, maji demashita hogai yo, I, it's like, do it right now, basically. Like, it's still a suggestion, but it's very strong suggestion. Maji demashita hogai yo. You could use some other... I think Genki actually had some good uh, good examples here. Let's just quickly take a look at what they had to say you could add to make it more emphatic. Uh, what were some of their examples? We had nothing. Hmm. I guess that must have been in the dictionary, which is behind me and I can't reach right now. Anyway. Maji manji des, says Kyushu Trails. All right. So, that is the last... Oh, I lied. I lied. I had a question for you. Chikaiuchi ni yatta hou ga ii koto ga arimasu ka? Is there anything that you really should do or had better do in the near future? So, chikaiuchi ni means in the near future, right? Chikaiuchi ni, or soon. Yatta is the past tense of the informal verb yaru which is is it's more a more informal suru basically yatta hou ga ii koto ga arimasu ka so koto sort of makes that whole thing into it nominalizes it and we can say do you have one of those things that you must do soon chikai uchi ni yatta hou ga ii koto ga arimasu ka you guys anything anything that you have to do in the near future. By the way, the reason I'm always looking over here is that I used to have a little tablet right here that I read the chat on, but it was so tiny I could never read anything showing up. I realized I could use my TV to look at chat. So I've got it over on the TV right there so I can see what you're talking about right now. Taylor Drew says, Atarashi shigoto kimeta hou ga ii ka na? Sou da ne. That's a hard one. 
It's not something that you can just do on your own. You have to depend on other people. Robert Halverson says, dude, don't get me started. I think I might have just done that. Sorry. But not really sorry. So, yeah. Um, as for myself, yatta ga ii koto. Yes. Kyushu Trail, Toki ni Andy to korabu shita hou ga ii. Yes. Kyushu Trail, Toki ni Andy to korabu shita hou ga ii. Ore mo Kyushu Trail to korabu shita hou ga ii to omoimasu. I think I should also do. Hmm? Korabo? Yuki says it's korabo. I have no idea. Collaboration in English, yeah. Korabo. Collaboration. Oh, you gotta love that wasego. Katakana sucks. Collaboration. Shon? Collaboration. Lovely. Right, and you cut it. Korabo. Sweet. We learned something new today. Kyushu toreru to korabo shita hou ga ii. Darn katakana. Yes, agreed. I, let's see, what should I do? Ore wa shogakkin o hayai uchi ni haratta hou ga ii na. I should pay off my student loans as quickly as possible. I'm working on it. Kyushu Trail says, thanks, Yuki. So if you're watching this in the replay and you've stuck it out till right now, I know some of you have, um, why don't you take this time right here to write down in the comments something that you need to do soon and try to do it in Japanese. You can use romaji if you want to, you can use all hiragana, you can use kanji, whatever you want. Um, and I will correct you if you want. Someone will correct you. There's a bunch of people on my channel who are actually already fluent in Japanese, so they can all help you out down there. Um, if anyone in the chat wants to practice right now as well, you're absolutely welcome to do that. I'm going to stay on for a few more minutes. Um, but it, we are at the end of part one of lesson 12 now. So that is where I say, Please hit the like button and channel toroku o onegai shimas. Please subscribe if you haven't. Uh, all of those things are completely optional. It's just a requirement to say them on YouTube. It's not actually a requirement. It's just you should say it, I guess. So yeah. Uh, Taylor Drew says, Katakana is my worst nightmare. Kyushu Trail says, Wasto night omea. Yes. You're good at those, Kishu Trail. Um, Katakana is a pain in the neck, man. I I really feel Dogen's... Uh, I love Dogen's lessons on Wasego, basically on Katakana Japanese. Well, Katakana English words within Japanese, because they are increasing. Like, oh my god. At my kindergarten, they keep using... So, first let me preface this by that the education system in Japan is changing a lot. There's a lot of changes that are happening. They're trying to be more... Well, they really want to bring up their test scores, basically. And they're trying to do that by making school a bit more individualistic than it has been up until now. Or at least attempting to do that. And part of that whole thing is doing things in the work environment newer. So new documentation, new ways of keeping records and stuff like that. But they keep using weird English to name those things. So the other day, uh, I was at one of my grade meetings, and the teacher was like, hey, Andy, do you want to help us do, and this was in Japanese, obviously, do you want to help us do documentation on Friday? And they said, documentation. Ishou ni yarimasu ka? Do you want to do documentation with us? That's what I heard anyway. Documentation wo ishou ni yarimasen ka? They said, that's, uh, wouldn't you do some documentation with us? And I'm like, what? Documentation? Like, I don't want to do documentation. What's documentation? It's just writing papers? So I, I asked like four times. Documentation de nan na no? They kept asking. And it turns out it was it's this special sheet of paper. Spe one sheet of big sheet of paper with pictures all over it and talking about how the class has been evolving over that month. So it's like a monthly big sheet of paper with pictures and notes on what the kids are doing did that month. And that's what they're call and they're calling it documentation. Right? How annoying is that? Like, ha so silly. And that's just one like simple example of something that's been happening a lot at my school lately. 
So Robert Haverson says, a lot less exposure to katakana. The first I learned and the one that stumps me. Well, then the kanji. Oh, Lord. Yeah, I struggle with that. Um, yeah, katakana was weird. Um, I used, I used, what was it? Who wrote, who wrote the Remembering the Kanji book? Uh, Heisig. Heisig wrote the Remembering the Kanji book. And he also wrote Remembering the Kana. And his book on the hiragana was actually really good. I think it took me three hours to be able to memorize all of like over a couple days to memorize them all like all the hiragana and i was able to recall them as i reviewed them for a couple days without much issue but the katakana book was not very good because katakana there's no real good like he uses stories to help you remember stuff so he'd have like a little one of the squiggly lines would be like imagine this and this and the other thing and it worked really well but for katakana sometimes you just like tsu and shi just like two lines, like a smiley face, but they're both smiley faces. So how are you going to differentiate between, between those? It was terrible. The book was terrible, that part of the book. So it took me a long time to learn Hiragana. And finally, one day I was just like, screw it. I'm going to take a week and I'm going to sit down every day and I'm going to write out five for like 10 or 20 minutes each, just saying them over and over again. And then I'm going to write a bunch of words and just do it by rote. And it worked for the most part. Um... I still have a hard time reading the words sometimes because they're just these long strings of something that ends up being an English word, sort of, and it may or may not mean the thing that the English word is. But what can you do? What can you do? That's just that's just how it goes. But anyway, yeah, sometimes, and this is my piece of advice for today, there's a lot of great language learning tips out there lots of them and you can find little tricks to help you memorize stuff like using stories and mnemonics and stuff like that but when you've hit a hit a wall in finding a new way to learn something sometimes the old way is the best way just writing it out 50 times I, it's not fun but i spent i wasted months trying to figure out a tricky way to memorize the the katakana and trying to like you know pick it up naturally when I could have just taken a couple hours and sat down and wrote them over and over again and learned them and it worked um I don't think that's the best way to learn kanji personally but for the hiragana and katakana because there's so there's so few it's not necessarily a bad method and it doesn't really take that long so that's it that's all I have to talk about today drill baby drill yes and use Anki or SRS apps as much as possible. Some people find them really boring, but listen, memorizing stuff, especially words and other languages, it can be boring. There, there's parts of it that are going to be boring. But when you learn it and you can use it, that's not boring. That's, that's an exciting, fun thing to be able to do. So anyway, that is my pep talk for today. Haven't touched my flashcards in weeks. I haven't touched flashcards in years, Taylor Drew. Years, so don't feel bad. Literally five years. I, I, I started a deck on Anki just testing some stuff out fairly recently in preparation since I'm going to take N2 and N1 this year. But they all suck. It's just like single words. There's no example sentences. So I'm making... I'm going to make my own decks for all of the, all of the JLPT. All of them. I'm going to make my own decks. They're going to be huge, but they'll work better for me. So maybe I'll share them when I'm done with them. But yeah, until then, I hadn't touched decks in, in years. I have a mountain name Anki deck. Oh, that's cool. I used to, I used to, um, I used to have this app where you could, you could take a website, you could put it into a little parser and it would spit out Anki cards for you from websites. So I went to mountain climbing blogs, Japanese ones. I'd put them into the parser and it would spit out cards with sentences and like vocab for mountains on it. God, I got to find that. That was such a cool, a cool app or a cool program. I don't remember what it was called. Anyway, Daniel Edwards. Thanks for joining tonight. How you doing? How's it going down in Australia? Tell your boyfriend I said thanks for watching. <laughs> that is cool. <clears throat> I, used to, I need to climb more mountains next year. And Kyushu Trail, within the next year or two, we should climb something together. Whether I go there or you come here. It's probably easier for me to go there, but I'm not sure about that. So anyway, guys, 
It's come to that time where we end the stream. I'm just going to let you guys know that tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. Japan time, so in, what is it? It's 10 o'clock. So in nine hours, is that, wow, nine hours. It's painful to say that. In nine hours, the new video, the lesson based on the skits from yesterday, is coming out. It's covering Hogai. If you were here for this lesson, you already know how to use Hogai, but if you want some refresher, that's coming out tomorrow. And Tuesday, we'll have the gaming stream, as always. And next week, there's more Ando-san. More lessons, more streams, part two of lesson 12. And I guess there's going to be Ando-san TikTok. I, I guess that's going to be a thing. Probably semi-daily, so maybe enjoy that. I don't know. I don't know if I can recommend downloading tic TikTok. I don't know how I feel about it, but I'm going to use it. So anyway, have a great night. Have a great week if I don't see you guys. Thank you for being here. And thank you for helping. Thank you for um, giving me some feedback and some tips. And Rob, thank for, thanks for the uh, thanks for the English help. I'm not that great at English, despite teach. Well, I don't really teach English. I'm a kindergarten teacher. But anyway, yes, thank you, thank you, Final Ball Studios. Thank you, Danielle. Thank you, Kyushu Trail. Thank you, Taylor Drew. Thank you, Nito Mark. Thank you, Dean Cook. Thank you. I think I think uh, thank you, Dan. Hope your headache is better. And I think that's everyone who is here today. If I missed you, I'm sorry. If you're watching on the replay, make sure you hit the like, the subscribe button if you haven't already. And uh, practice what we learned today down in the comments. Or join me on the Discord or follow my Twitter and ask me questions there. All right. Have a good night, guys. Thank you very much. See you next time. Bye-bye.